you're not good enough. You don't know enough. You certainly don't deserve blah, blah, blah. Now, the thing is that at some point in our life, we were told that maybe we were three and we were tying our shoes and we couldn't figure it out and we were called stupid or maybe, you know, like I had uh, a math thing going on and my dad would like sort of smack the back of my head and tell me to think about it as if math was something that you could logically think your way through. It's a bunch of memorizing, right? One plus one is two, two plus one is three, all of that. It's memorization. It's got nothing to do with your brilliance. So... I recently heard um, a study and the study said of these young children, five years old, I believe they were, that they were tested for genius. Turns out that 98% of them had genius abilities. Now, by the time that they were 10, we've institutionalized them, put them in school, put them in little desks, made them sit still. By the time that they were 10, that had dropped down to something like 30%. So we're trained out of our genius. We're told that we can't do something. It might be your gender. It might be your race. It might be uh, your the color of your hair because you're too old. You're not smart enough. So all of these things that we were told a long time ago still rule our lives and we live out of what I call bogus beliefs. So last weekend on Saturday, I sat in circle with 15 women and be danged if those things didn't come up. And they ranged in age from 77 down to about 32. And it was one of the common beliefs that we have. So I am going to suggest and maybe even do a little master class on bust your bogus beliefs. We live out of these things that aren't true. We're walking and talking like, like, like we still are five. And we have proven to ourselves time and time and time again that you can do what you want. You can do what you say. And when you tap into your authenticity, you find that some of the things that you thought you couldn't do, that is just not true. So how do you come to understand this? Well, first of all, you look at your desires. If you desire something and you don't have it, my belief in the way that I am in the world is that there's there's a belief holding you back. And that belief that's holding you back, you didn't conjure that up all by your very lonesome. You had some help. So we look at where the heck did it come from? First of all, we d identify our desire. Then once we have our desire figured out, then we look at all the reasons that we don't have that. And in those reasons, there are beliefs that someone else gave you. Society's really good at that. You know, after you're a certain age, you're, um, you, you don't have any worth anymore. After you are a certain blah, blah, then you are diminished. So these are, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. So when you have this ability to look at your desires, write them down. Write down what you desire and then write down for each one. I bet there's a number, maybe five or six or sometimes 20 reasons that you don't believe you can have it. So when you get this, when you understand that, then you can look at those reasons and go, where did that come from? And do, do I still want to hold on to it? Is it costing me or is it serving me? So then you look at where it came from, whether it's costing you or whether it's serving you. If it's serving you, you don't need to change it. If it's costing you, then it's okay for you to source it. Where did it come from? You know, I always use my dad. 
My dad loved me very much. And when I got ready to buy a car, he told me not to buy a new car because immediately it hits the curb and boom, there goes a thousand bucks out the window. So that was a belief that I held on to. And so I've only, <laughs> I've only had one new car. Now it's not serving me any longer. And so I get to return that to my dad with love, with kindness, with thanks and gratitude, because when people are doing their best, they're doing their best at their state of consciousness. So that was my dad's state of consciousness, you know, buy used because it's not going to depreciate so quickly. So you can look at the things in your life that you desire. You can look at the reasons you don't have them. You'll find out that in there, there are some that come from somebody else. So then you get to go, is it costing me or is it serving me? Serving you, keep it. Costing you, you get to give it back. And I have a whole process and a way that I teach about doing this. So in Craft Your Dream Life, we look at, we look at what's holding us back. And then we get the ability to shift that. We understand our non-negotiables. We understand our priorities. And then we look at our beliefs. Because when you know what your bottom line is, when you know that you have 10 priorities in your life that, that you're following, then you get to look at what belief is it that not moving me forward. So it's called Bust Your Bogus Beliefs, and um, it's, oh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to, um, to the to ebook the e so that you can get it and you can walk yourself through this. So look for a masterclass sometime soon in the next couple of weeks as I get ready to um, offer to launch uh, craft your dream life with the magic of shamanic journeys. I have lived my life like this for the past, it'll be 27 years since I quit my day job in August. My guides are my constant companions. They're like, turn left, go over here, do this. And because of that, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm home free right now. And I'm not in angst about it because I know that spirit has my back. And when you come from that place of deep knowing that someone's got my back, and as a matter of fact, the other day I went, okay, hold on, someone has my back, but what about my front? What about my sides? What about above me and what about below me? Turns out that when I took a moment to do a journey and ask, I have this amazing guidance all around me. Aphrodite stands in front. Kali is behind. Buddha and Ganesha and then under is octopus. And above me is my council. So if you're ready to actually dive deep and look at your beliefs, because that's the, in my opinion, that's the only thing holding you back, is that maybe you still believe that you don't deserve it. Maybe you still believe that you're not worthy. Maybe you still believe that you don't know enough. So I'm gonna tell you that those things are not true. And whatever your passion is, whatever you are excited about, I'll bet you somebody out there wants to learn about that. So bust your bogus beliefs. I'll put a link in and then you can bust your bogus beliefs. It's a very simple process. It's actually quite lovely because you get to have a sense of freedom. You know, you're giving them back. I'm giving it back to my dad. I'm giving it back to society that says, you know, women don't travel on their own. <laughs> so you get to give it back and then write yourself a new code of a new code of ethics, a new code of being in the world, and uh, and then live into those. So when you write yourself a new belief, like 
We'll use my dad, me and my dad. And so if I write myself a belief, I deserve, I deserve a new car. My new car does not hit the curb and drop a thousand dollars. As a matter of fact, year after year after year, my car appreciates. And when you write that and then you begin to move into that, what happens is that doorways that you didn't even see before begin to open up for you. So if you're watching right now, thank you so much. Thanks, Kathy. And if you're watching the replay, blessings on you. Thank you so much for doing that. And let's just give away some love because my belief is that what I put out into the world comes back to me three to ten times. So, hey, Nancy. So, let's energize our hands. So, just a little recap. If you don't have everything you desire, it's because you have a belief that you can't have that. So, let's look at those beliefs. Let's send them back to where they came from. Write ourselves a new code of beliefs, a new bunch of beliefs, unbogus, and then... Let's move into living our life authentically with love and joy and grace and ease. And let's open fully to give, accept, and embrace all the good the universe has for you. One more time. And here's what you say. I open fully to give, give it away, give it away, give it away, accept, big old bowls with your hands, and embrace, put it in your heart all the good the universe has for me. One last time, I open fully and freely to give, accept, and embrace all the good the universe has for me. Namaste, a whole bliss, and in case no one has told you so far today, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Blessings. Love ya. See ya. Bye.